Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the class on Minister's Foundation. Can you all hear me well? Good morning, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer. So can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone would like to lead us in prayer? Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful morning you have given us, oh, Father, Lord. Thank you for this uh, time, oh, Father, where we can sit in your presence and read and learn, oh, Father, Lord. Uh, as we come in your presence, oh, Father, I commit Selena, ma'am, in your hands, oh, Father, Lord. Uh, give her wisdom and knowledge, oh, Father, Lord Jesus. Help us also to learn, oh, Father. Holy Spirit, teach us a new thing, oh, Father, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, let your will, let your plans and purpose be fulfilled in each one of our lives, oh, Father. Holy Spirit, rest of the class, we commit in your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so welcome, everyone, uh, all the in-person students, online students, and also a warm welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture uh, later on. We just pray that uh, today's class will be edifying, enriching, will uh, strengthen us even as we are in our journey of life trying to discern, hear uh, from God, receive his guidance, to know how we he's guiding us and leading us, and also to apply what we are learning in our uh, everyday lives. Sorry, I'm having a throat infection, uh, actually a viral fever, a throat infection, so my voice will not be too good today. Um, so we looked at um, two primary ways that God uh, leads us um, and guides us. One is His wo the Word, the Word of God, Scripture, Bible. And the second one is through the Holy Spirit the voice of the Holy Spirit, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, also to the gifts of the uh, Holy Spirit and the uh, inner voice of the Holy Spirit. So those are the two primary ways that God will lead us and guide us. And the secondary ways that God leads us and guides us is we looked at in chapter 7, uh, dreams and visions. And we began looking at chapter 8, even through prophecies. Uh, we look at chapter 9 where um, he will lead us through angels and um, uh, also through, um, uh, you know, um, godly counsel, a renewed mind, times and seasons, circumstances and divine orchestration. So these are all secondary ways that God leads us. But when he leads us through these secondary ways, we always need to go back to his word and confirm if it is what he is leading and guiding us is according to his word, if we've heard correctly from God, and also the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will also attest and confirm if what we have uh, received through the secondary means, secondary ways, is what God is speaking to us, because Satan is also known as the angel of light. He can disguise himself as angel of light, and he can, you know, deceive us. He can speak things into our ears, our, um, our, um, uh, in our minds, and we can think that it is from God. So we need to be very, very careful. Okay. So last week we began looking at prophecy, um, chapter eight, a secondary way through God, through which God leads us and guides us. So prophecy is basically God speaking to man through man. So prophecy is God speaking to man through man. And, um, you know, we looked at uh, this verse that says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, that prophecy brings about edification, exhortation, and comfort to God's people. So it edifies, ex exhorts, and it comforts us. So uh, prophecy can also be used to bring correction, <coughs> direction, and um, revelation. Okay, so uh, through these, uh, you know, prophecies that we receive, God can bring uh, correction in our lives. He can bring direction and also reveal things that we are, you know, uh, we don't know, we are unaware of, and things that are li lying dormant in our 
um, lives. Uh, we look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. <clears throat> it's in your, uh, in your um, uh, publication. So can we all read that together, please? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. It says, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good. Okay, so here it says that we need to test all prophecies. Uh, we shouldn't reject prophecies. We must be open to prophecies. But it, the word of God says that we also need to test prophecies and we need to hold on to what is good, which implies that we need to reject what is bad. Now, you can ask this question, why should I test the prophecy when it is coming through the Holy Spirit? It is God speaking to man through man. So why should I test uh, prophecies? Because the Holy Spirit, yes, is perfect. The gift is perfect. But the vessel that, you know, the Holy Spirit is revealing through is imperfect. That means the prophet, the person himself is imperfect. So there is a possibility of contamination, meaning that they will mix, the prophet can mix up their own words with God's word, or they can mix up their own words with God's message. Okay. So for example, God is giving us meat, just say lamb or mutton, okay, or chicken. And, uh, you know, the, the prophet puts his own spices, adds more spices and adds more masala to make it more tasty. Okay. So the God is giving them a message, but they can add two or three more you know, pieces to that, three or two or three more sentences, what they think and what they feel and what they perceive, and they can give it to you. So we need to, you know, discern, we need to test, uh, hold on to what is good, and we need to reject what is um, bad. <clears throat> and we also need to test the source of the uh, inspiration, whether the person is speaking, the so-called prophet is speaking from top of his mind. Sometimes it can be even a demonic source. So we need to test the validity of the message, uh, you know, what they have conveyed. Uh, how do we test the validity of the message? First, if it is in line with God's word. So you take the prophecy, you write it down, or you record it when they are speaking to you, you know, on your mobile, then you go back and test it in line if it's in line with God's word. Secondly, we need to test if it is glorifying Jesus, if the prophecy that has been given is glorifying Jesus. And also you need to ask the Holy Spirit to bear inner witness in your spirit regarding that message. Okay. And also another way that we can confirm that the prophecy is right or it's good is if God has been speaking to you already about this over time. Okay, so we can receive prophecy, but we need to test the validity of what the prophet is saying or what they're prophesying over our lives. Now, it's important to know uh, that, you know, we shouldn't go prophecy shopping. You know, some of us, uh, we're in a, as, when we are in a problem or a difficulty, we need a solution. You know, we run from person to person, uh, you know, uh, uh, from one prophet to another prophet, you know, um, asking them to pray for us, to reveal what God is telling us to do. Well, we don't have to go prophecy shopping because God knows where you are, okay? And he knows what you need to hear from him through prophecy. So let it come to you because God knows, hey, this is the situation that you're going through. You know, um, it's difficult. You need to hear from him and you're not able to, you're not in a position to hear from him. So he will send the person to prophesy over your life, to speak into your life. So you, know, you wait, but you don't run prophecy uh, shopping. You know, most of us, some of us do that. Um, so, you know, wait for God. He will, uh, you know, speak to you. He will uh, send you the message that you need to hear through uh, prophecy. Okay. But in the meantime, what do you do? You primarily go back to the ways that God leads us and guides us through his word and through the inner witness of the Holy uh, Spirit, okay? Now, there are several ways in which God can use prophecy to bring his guidance to us, okay? The first one is through prophetic confirmation. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, you know when, 
prophetic confirmation is, uh, you know, when we want God to speak to us or it is to bring confirmation to what God has already been speaking to us, to confirm it to us. So if you're praying about something and you're praying to make a decision about something or, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're thinking about a certain direction or a course in your life and, um, you know, you're waiting on God for a confirmation. Maybe you've already heard uh, through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, but you want to make sure because it's a very important decision uh, in your life. It's like one of the most strategic decisions that you're making in your life. And, uh, you know, you can just wait on God. So, you know, uh, a prophet or somebody uh, can come to you who really doesn't know what you're going through, what you're thinking, what God has place in your heart and they can bring you know a word of prophecy confirming the direction in which god is has been leading you and guiding you so it can be through prophetic confirmation uh, also another way that god brings guidance through prophecy is prophetic uh, direction okay he directs he directs us in the way that we need to go um, it, that means that god can direct you in a certain way through a prophetic word that you're beginning to move in a certain way, you know, go in a certain way, in a certain direction, make a sp specific choice. Then somebody comes and, you know, prays over you and says, hey, the way that you're going is right. Uh, what you're doing is right. Uh, this course that you are doing is right. Or the, this person you've chosen for your life is right. Or even as you're going to take up this new job in this certain field is what God has for you. So it just basically brings you confirmation. It brings you encouragement. And then you begin to move in that uh, direction. So the prophetic word can come, uh, you know, just to guide you, to direct you in the path that God wants you to go. Okay. And another way that God guides us through prophecy is through uh, prophetic revelation okay so prophetic revelation is you know sometimes uh, we are not aware of the potential that God has placed in our lives you know or we may not be aware of the call the plan and the purpose that God has for our lives and uh, sometimes you know things are lying uh, dormant or they are you know just sleeping inside us we're not doing anything about the skills the talents the calling the abilities that god has placed in our lives uh, because we don't know that or we have not uh, it goes unrecognized or we're not aware of it so god can you know through prophetic word or through prophecy he can unveil his plan and purposes for our lives uh, he can uh, tell you that hey i place these things in your life these are uh, my gifts. These are the calling, your purpose for your life. Uh, what And he can also reveal some things about the future. Uh, so God can use thing, uh, prophecy to reveal things about the future uh, so that you can prepare for yourself. Okay. So these are three uh, ways that God guides us through prophecy. The first one is the prophetic confirmation. He confirms already what he's been speaking to us. Direction, he's basically directing in your way, uh, directing you in a specific way, but through prophecy, there comes assurance as encouragement. Hey, yes, this is the way that I need to go. This is the right direction. So it is, um, you know, something that encourages us and strengthens us. And we continue to pursue in that direction and also prophetic um, revelation. Okay. So don't go around seeking prophecies. Uh, let God speak to you through his word and through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And if he knows or he uh, He wants to reveal things through uh, people to you, uh, into your life, speak over your life, he will do that. Okay. So that is briefly about uh, prophecies. Any questions? There is a um, uh, pastor has shared one of his life examples. You can read that after class is over. Sister, I have a question. Yes, Gertrude. Uh, you know, some of the prophets, when they prophesy and the prophecy doesn't come true, that means it was uh, not a true prophecy. It doesn't happen, that prophecy. Um, sometimes prophecies can take um, uh, months and years even uh, for the prophetic word to be fulfilled. So 
for example, you know, many years back, somebody prophesied over my life that I would be healed of my back problem. Uh, and I did have a back problem uh, at that point of time, but I just wrote down that prophecy. And um, many years later, I had a severe back issue. And, uh, you know, the doctor asked me to rest for almost two weeks. And I had, I couldn't do that. I had to go to schools. I was ministering in schools. That was my passion. It's not somebody could lie down for two weeks. That was impossible. So I just prayed. And then I remember this prophetic word that I had received that, you know, God will heal you of your back issue. So I just prayed that. And I said, God, you have already revealed to me that you are going to heal me. So I'm just receiving that healing. And of course, I went back and I, I did my normal routines. I, 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 of course, I took care for, of my back. I took the needed rest also that was required. But yes, God did heal me of my back issue. So it took years after I received that prophetic word. OK, thank you, sister. So if a proph prophecy does not come true, how should we take it? We should just take it as the person who prophesied just spoke on from top of his head, or it was not from God. It was just something that maybe the, the person knows you and just spoke something for the sake of speaking. But we don't judge the person. Uh, we just uh, uh, you know leave it. But maybe it will take years for the prophecy to come true. So you can just hold on uh, to, that, to that as well. Yeah. Any other questions? OK, there are no questions. Uh, we'll move on to Angels, uh, Chapter 9. Now, you might be wondering. Uh, good morning. Yes, Miriam. I also have a question, actually, something to know about prophecy. Yes, please go ahead. How will you know a true prophecy? And uh, you know, there are people who can see maybe what you do from out or what happens from out and then sometimes they come and speak that how will you know that that is a true prophecy and that is really coming from god so i've already mentioned that thank you for your question miriam i already mentioned that in my lecture so far uh, prophecy is basically what brings edification uh, what brings um, uh, exhortation and comfort. So if it's bringing, it's bringing edification, exhortation and comfort, it's building you up, it's encouraging you. It's something prophecy can also bring about correction, direction and revelation means God has revealed something to you. He's directing you a specific way. And this person who doesn't know anything about you is confirming that direction, that leading or is revealing things in your life that you're not aware of. We know it's from God. And I also said that when we receive prof uh, prophecies, we need to go back and, you know, check the validity of it. If it's in line with God's word, if it's glorifying Jesus uh, and also the Holy Spirit will confirm it to you, to the inner witness, you can pray about it. The Holy Spirit can confirm it to you, can speak in those same lines. You can feel, sense the peace, the joy, which is, you know, to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, which we learned. And also, um, you know, um, that uh, you can just wait on God and, you know, you can hear him speak and he will confirm it and he will um, attest it. But if you know that the person knows you and is speaking from the top of his mind, uh, or if it's um, something that is, you know, from a demonic source, it will not bring edification, comfort. It will not bring, uh, you know, uh, exhortation. It will be something that will really disappoint you, upset you, you know, and you don't feel the peace and the joy, uh, you know, because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. And if you don't sense that, if it's not right, then, you know, it is just from the person, what he's speaking from the top of his mind. Um, but you can always take it, go back, you know, and test whether it is right. Take whatever is right, take whatever is wrong, you can just leave it. Did that help, Miriam? Hello, Miriam. Did that help? Okay, okay. Thank you. I've had. Sorry, we can't hear you. I'm like, okay. 
Thank you. I've heard that. Okay. Thank you. So we'll move on to chapter nine. Anyone else has any questions? Okay. There are no questions, and we'll move on to chapter nine, uh, where we will look at how God directs us, uh, guides us through uh, angels. Just give me a minute, please. Yeah. So we see that, uh, you know, angels ministered to people both in the Old and the New Testament. We see God using angels to send messages to people, uh, to guide them, to direct them, to reveal what, was the, what God was planning to do uh, in their lives and also explain uh, the, the visions or the meaning of the visions they received from God. So we see both in the Old and New Testament, God using angels to guide, lead, to reveal, to direct, uh, to reveal what he has planned uh, to do in their lives and also explain um, the meaning of visions that they have received from God. Okay, we see this even in the early church that, um, you know, um, uh, God ministered to them through angels. Angels were very active uh, during the early church, and they are still very active in the church age as well today. Okay, so we can receive the ministry, the guidance, the leading, the directing, uh, and also the uh, revelation of what God is planning to do in our lives through angels. Okay, so if you look at the New Testament, we see that, you know, angels announced to Mary uh, that she would have a child. We also see angel, an angel appearing to Joseph in a dream, instructing him to take uh, Mary as his wife, also instructing him to go to Egypt. We looked at uh, these um, passages in scripture earlier in our uh, previous lessons as well. Um, so even as angels ministered in Old and New Testament, even in the early church, we can also, uh, you know, be open to the ministry of angels. Okay, let's look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Can somebody read that, please? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those? who will inherit salvation. Amen. Thank you. So here it says that angels have been sent to serve minister, uh, to serve minister to those who are heirs of salvation or to those who are saved. So angels, you know, serve and minister to those who are heirs of salvation. That means all of us who are children of God. Uh, to those who are born again, who are saved. So angels have been dispatched to serve you. So angels do many things. They protect us from harm and danger, you know, um, and many of us can recount uh, times when we you know should have been dead, but something just protected us. And that must have been your angel. So a couple of angels are doing their job protecting our lives. Uh, we also see in scripture that angels are used by God to send messages to us, uh, like we saw in the case of Mary and Joseph. Okay, um, so in the case of Joseph, we see that, you know, uh, uh, God spoke to him in the night, which means uh, that the angels came to him in a dream and they basically intercepted his thinking with a message from God. So just like the Holy Spirit can speak to us, angels also speak to us. They can also intercept our thinking or our visual, vis, visualization uh, into imagination with messages from God. So they can speak to us. Okay. Um, uh, we can hear um, their, you know, they can sometimes they can appear to us, they can speak audibly. Uh, they can speak to us without being visible. They can speak to us in uh, dreams. They can also influence our thoughts, which means they can put, they can intercept our thinking, our thoughts. They can intercept our visualization into imagination with messages from 
um, God. Okay, so angels can speak and we can hear them through the ear of our spirit man, you know, just like our uh, bodies have five senses, our soul have five senses, our bodies have five senses, the same way spirit also can, you know, uh, has these five senses. Our spirit man can also see, hear, touch, feel and taste. Okay, that's why it says taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay, so a spirit man can also has these five senses through which God, uh, you know, uh, ministers to us or speaks to us, or we can receive uh, the the message from the spirit of God in our spirit man. Okay, so we need to be open to uh, angels ministering to us. You know. Um, uh, oftentimes during worship, we can sense the, you know, the presence of angels ministering among us. Sometimes, you know, when you're preaching or teaching, you can see people have seen angels around the ministers of God, just, you know, there, you know, just ministering to them uh, and through them to the congregation. Uh, so we must be open and aware of angelic activity around us. But even as we do, there are some things that we need to keep in mind. We don't worship angels. We just worship only God because he alone deserves our worship. He alone is to be worshipped and praised. And we don't seek after angelic visitations. Our focus should remain on Jesus. It is he who will you know, um, send his angels uh, to guard us, to do everything that concerns us. We, our focus should not be on angels, but our focus should be on Jesus. And we must discern angelic visitations because sometimes Satan and his demons can imitate themselves as angels of light. So sometimes angels and demons, you know, can... Um, can imitate themselves as um, angels of light and then can come. So we need to be very, very careful uh, and we need to discern if it is a demonic visitation or an angelic visitation. So how do you discern that? If it's an angelic visitation, there is peace, there's joy, you can just sense the presence of God. If it is a demonic um, a visitation, even if it comes as light, but there can be something very eerie, something uncomfortable, uh, something that's not just right. You feel that, you can sense that in your spirit, man, okay? Uh, we ask God for assistance of his angels according to his word. So, you know, um, uh, 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 God sends his angels to, uh, to assist us. So we need to ask God to, you know, send his angels to uh, assist us and um, you know and we also need to speak um, um, uh, you know the promises declaring what his angels can do with uh, uh, for us and um, even as it is given in his um, word so you know uh, it's nothing wrong in um, asking God for assistance of angels but you know even as we're asking god we can we can declare what he has written in his word we can say god let your angels watch over us let your angels watch over you know people who are who you are praying for or your family members you know uh, you can even as you're praying for them you can just say god uh, send your angels to guard them watch over them uh, uh, you can release and speak the word of God concerning angels, saying, God, your word says, you know, that you will give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Uh, you can speak this over your family, your loved ones, your friends. You can speak and declare this word of God. You can also say, God, your word says that the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear you and you deliver them. So you can say, God, send your angels to encamp around me and deliver me. You know, uh, you can also speak that uh, and invite angelic activity into your life and um, ask God to and be open, uh, you know, to uh, minister to you through angels. In some situations, you know, when you're praying for people uh, who are oppressing you, who are troubling you, you can you can also pray and say, God, send your angels to take care of them. So it's nothing wrong in uh, praying and asking God to send his angels to minister um, 
to you or uh, to people you're praying for or to your loved ones. We also see that, you know, there was a lot of angelic activity in the early church. Uh, for example, there are quite a few examples given here, you know, it, how the angel delivered uh, Peter from prison and instructed him to go and preach in the temple. We read this in Acts chapter 5, verses 19 to 20. We also see an angel directing Philip to go down to Gaza, where he goes and preaches uh, the gospel to the Ethiopian man in the chariot, and how this man takes the gospel to Ethiopia after he's baptized. He's convinced the truth about the truth that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is God. We also see an uh, angel appearing to Cornelius, who was a Gentile who loved God, you know, and um, God, uh, the angel directed him to send men to Joppa to where Peter was living so that he can come and preach the gospel to them. And we see how, you know, um, an angel was also released to Peter, um, you know, of, uh, and how when he was in the prison and how his chains were broken and how the angel uh, directed him out of the prison. Okay. We also see angels struck Herod and he died. And um, angel appeared to Paul while he was sailing uh, to Rome and assured him that you know, no life will be lost, even as you know they were facing a very severe and a very terrible storm, that um, he said that even if the ship was going to be damaged, that Paul, uh, his life would be saved and uh, you know the people on the ship, their lives would be saved as well, and that he would surely appear to Caesar at uh, Rome. Okay, so we see that um, you know how angels guided, led, delivered, uh, spoke, and ministered to uh, the people in the early church. So we can also be open to angelic um, activity in our lives for them to direct us, lead us, guide us, um, to bring God's message um, to us and also reveal um, things that God has planned to do for our lives. They can also give us the meaning of visions that we have received from God. Okay. So even as we've learned about angels, you can pray and ask God and be open uh, to the guidance and to the work of the uh, angels that God has uh, directed to send to each one of us. Any questions on chapter 9? Can you share a personal encounter with an angel or an angelic encounter of someone you may know? Uh, well, I uh, yeah, there are so many examples. Um, I, I remember once I was preaching, I think it was my first time I was preaching in a church um, for on, on Good Friday. And, um, uh, you know, uh, and after the message, I heard one of, uh, I know one auntie was very prayerful. She said, uh, you know, when you were preaching, I just saw angels around you. So I think they were just there to minister to me. I was extremely nervous. It was a mainline church. Uh, it was the first time I was preaching, uh, so I just needed that encouragement. So I think they were just there to encourage, support. I don't know what they were doing, but I just felt the powerful presence of uh, God. So she said she saw angels. Um, we we can read various people who've had angelic uh, encounters. Uh, I can't think of anything as of now. But maybe if I can think of something, I can share, Sanjay. But I, there are times when I know that, you know, I would have had an accident. God has saved me, protected me. Uh, I think it's just the angels that are guarding and protecting us. Um, I can tell, share one example. I don't know. I, I didn't see any angels, though. But well, I had gone for a mission trip from APC. We had gone to Gujarat. And uh, when I was um, going on... Uh, you know, we were going in the in the vehicle, in the car, to the place that we were going to minister. It was very early in the morning. And I was just singing the song, the God of angel armies is always by my side. I kept repeating those that uh, two, three lines of that same song, and I was singing it so loudly. And I, I realized, I don't know why I was just 
singing those two three lines over and over and uh, repeating it and I was singing loudly in the car everybody was there along with me who were going and uh, when we went to the place where the we were ministering you know um uh, we were we just entered the place and i was going to sit on the chair but accidentally someone didn't realize that i'm going to sit down on the chair they just pulled the chair off so i sat you know sat down on my butts just hit the rock bottom the ground it was not a cemented or a you know a, a granite uh, flooring it was a very hard uh you know it was just mud and uh you know, uh, it was a village, so it was cow dung and mud mixed. It was very hard flooring. But when I sat down, I just felt a cushion under me. I didn't sense the ground. I didn't sense my back hitting the ground. I just felt a cushion, you know, under me. So when I, I was in a state of shock, when I woke up, you know, there were two doctors along with us in the team who had gone from Bangalore. They, they took me in, I, you know, they looked at me. I said, I'm not feeling pain. They said, maybe in a state of shock. But, you know, uh, I didn't sense any pain. I didn't have any pain. I, I felt so hard on my butts. But then I, I was thinking later on when, when the shock, everything, you know, kind of left and I was in my normal senses. I realized that I actually sat on a cushion and there was no cushion down. And then I realized that, hey, the song I was singing, you know, God of Angel Armies is always by my side. Um, and I don't know why I sang that, but, you know, I just singing that and that's made so much sense. It was just my angels that are there to guard and protect me. I just said, I've really badly hurt my back. So that's two of my personal examples. Sanjay, I hope that helps. Pastor, can angels take human appearance? No, I. Angels can't take human appearance, no. I don't think so. Pastors, can, can angels also come in this time, like early church, earlier church, visibly? Yes, why not? They can come visibly because as I, I, Diksha, like I gave my example when I was preaching, this auntie actually saw angels around me. And people have seen uh, angels. So, yes, they can be visible. They can come visibly. They can be invisible as well. Uh, according to 1 Corinthians 6 3, why judgment over angel authority is given to human? Because um, you know, we are created uh, in God's image. We are created, uh, you know, above, above the angels as well. Okay. Did that help, uh, Nelson? What does First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 read? Can you please uh, read that? says, uh, do you not know that we will judge angels how much more the things of this life? So here in this verse, basically, you know, Paul is addressing the, the disputes that the believers were having at Corinth. And, uh, you know, he was talking about the importance of resolving uh, the conflicts within the church. So Paul is emphasizing the idea that believers will have a role in judgment, not only in the matters within the church community, but also in the future judgment uh, involving um, angels. Now, the exact uh, reason why believers will judge angels are not explicitly like uh, given in detail in this verse. And, you know, uh, interpretations can vary. Uh, some scholars suggest that believers will participate in the judgment of fallen angels or angels who have not fulfilled their roles properly. So it emphasizes the authority and responsibility that believers will have in the age to come. But uh, looking at this verse, it is, it, it is uh, important for us to interpret this verse in the light of the rest of scripture or in the, in the broader biblical context and not just draw conclusions from just this one uh, passage or this one statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, so the exact nature and the extent of believers' role in judging angels, you know, actually is, 
you know, something that's a topic of theological discussion and interpretation. So we really don't know. <clears throat> so did that uh, help, Nelson? OK. Any other questions? OK. There are no other questions. We'll move on to chapter 10. Now, chapter 10, Godly Counsel. Chapter 11, Renewed Mind. Chapter um, 12, which is Times and Seasons. And chapter 13, which is Circumstances and Divine Orchestrations are all which I explained in detail when we were looking at the nine guide posts in fulfilling God's purpose for your life. So I'm not going to be looking at all the scripture passages and, you know, be uh, explaining it because I've explained all of this in detail when we were studying fulfilling God's purpose in your life because all of these were the nine, one of the nine guide posts. Uh, also, the renewed mind, we looked at it quite a lot in detail, the, the verses in Ephesians, the verses in um, um, uh, Romans, we studied quite in detail in chapter one. So I'll just kind of highlight a few things and we will just move on. Okay. So chapter 10, Godly Counsel. Now, um, uh, another way that God guides us, the secondary way God guides us and leads us is through people. So God uses his people to speak, help, guide uh, us along the paths for our lives. Okay. So, um, Yes, God guides us through his counsel, and it is often brought through people who know the ways of God, understand the heart of God, and have the wisdom of God. So it's good that, you know, we need to humble ourselves. We need to also receive counsel from godly people. So how do we know which person we need to go uh, for a particular problem, difficulty that we're having. It can be anything, you know, from which career to choose, whether this is uh, uh, the right career, this is the right course, which job to choose, you're starting a business, you want to do business and ministry, you want to get into full-time ministry, you want to move to a certain place, you want to marry someone, you know, you're having marital uh, problems uh, or relationship problems. It's it's good to take godly counsel. So how do you choose the people? Basically, you know, uh, people who uh, know the ways of God, they understand the heart of God, they have the wisdom of um, God. And also, yes, they need to have the skill in that particular area. So remember when I was in school, you know, uh, or in college, I want to become a cardiologist. And, uh, you know, so I went and spoke to a cardiologist who was uh, who used to come to our church. And they told me everything about uh, cardiology and, uh, you know, all the details. And I realized that, hey, the way God has fashioned me, the, <clears throat> the way God has made me, you know, uh, I'm not designed for this because I know that like, I'm not very good at my hands. Um, I'm not very creative. I can't even draw a straight line. I can't even cut straight. And um, I realized that when I was in 12th grade, when I was uh, doing, I, I took science. So, you know, there's a lot of practicals that we have. We have to dissect a fish and a cockroach and a rat and, and all of those things. I used to you know, and re remove the digestive system and the respiratory system and display it. I just couldn't do it right. I would squash up my entire specimen that was given to me. And I realized that if I'm going to become a cardiologist, I would just cut people's veins or arteries and they're going to surely die. So that is not the area that God has called me to or he's designed me for. And, you know, he showed me in the right time where I need to be. Okay. So it's good to receive uh, counsel from the right people. Because when we do that, it puts us in a place of safety. We can draw strength. Look at what Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14 says. Can somebody read that, please? Proverbs 7, 14. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Amen. So saying receive, when we receive counsel, it puts us in a place of safety. We're in a safe place. We know what we are doing, whether it's a right thing or a wrong thing. You know, it puts us in a place of strength. We can draw from wisdom, experience, and learning of godly uh, 
people okay so sometimes we might have an idea you want to do this you can you want to do that but it's important to get the right input so suppose you want to start a business so suppose you want to do something in ministry it's good to go and speak to person a person who is uh, you know has experience in that area you go meet them you can ask them and when you do that you know you get uh, ideas you get um, uh, you know they teach you what they had done what went wrong what you should be doing what is right what is the uh, you know the way to go about this so it saves you so much of time it saves you so much of uh, uh, mental uh, stress uh, it saves so much of your uh, you know uh, energy because now you've hey, I shouldn't be doing this, I should be doing this, uh, I shouldn't uh, do this this way because, you know, I can land up in this problem. So if you don't ask counsel, then you start all from scratch, then imagine you know, years of toil and stress and difficulty. And, you know, if you can just ask somebody uh, who's gone through all of those things, they share from their experience, they share how they went through things, what they did, what they did not do right, what they did right. We can just learn from their experience. It makes it more easier. It makes it more simpler for us. So we we uh, we can move fast in our uh, journey in um, life. OK, so, you know, we receive the right input from the right kind of people. They help us see that uh, how we can make our idea into a reality. Or sometimes we have an idea we have. Uh, uh, interest but you know when we hear from them then we say hey I'm not cut out for this I don't think I'm good in these these areas so maybe you want to start a business you can say hey I'm not good in finance I'm not good at you know relating with people I'm not uh, I can get easily fooled with people because I'm very naive and simple people can fool me so you now we can get all of those ideas and then if we think that's not going to work we can just drop the um, idea okay so also good to not just take information from one person you know get information for more than um, one person okay so um, you know when uh, look at what proverbs chapter 20 verse 18 says can somebody read that please proverbs chapter 20 verse 18 proverbs chapter 20 verse 18 plans are established by counsel by wise counsel wake war yeah amen so it says the counsel you receive is like weapons that gear you up for battle so go into the uh, fight armed with counsel from wise people so sometimes you're entering into things you want to do things sometimes you know you you want to get into a job or you want to get into a business you know and they're giving you counsel it is it's like a weapon that is gearing you up for the challenges the difficulties that uh, 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 you know that you are going to meet on your road towards your uh, you know plan and your purpose or uh, what god has envisioned for your life and you can use them at the right time uh, to you know you can use the right kind of weapons that you have received from godly counsel the right time to handle difficult situations or when you face challenges uh, you can use these weapons that you have received uh, through godly counsel that will bring you through victory otherwise imagine if you have not received this counsel you don't know how to wage war how to fight against this how to overcome this uh, difficulty then you know you are um, feeling tired you feel that you've uh, you know you can't just have the energy and the strength to get up and run and to finish your race but if you have received godly counsel you know how to handle things ahead of time it will lead you into victory okay uh, but the important thing is that we need to receive counsel from people who you know who have uh, a deep uh, in uh, in time have been tested and proven to walk with God, those who will speak based on authority of God's word and in submission to the Holy Spirit. It's very, very important. Sometimes we can take counsel from ungodly people, ungodly in the sense in the world who are doing very well in that area 
of business or that area of uh, skill that you are involved in, you can learn from their experience, their skill sets, their wisdom, their knowledge, but you can take what is right and leave out what is wrong. So if they're telling you to do some wrong things, hey, you can bribe this person, bribe that person, give them so much of money, give them, give this person so much of money, do this this way, don't have to present the right figures in your business deal and all of those things. You know those are wrong. Leave out those bad things, take what is right, take what is good you can also learn from um, them okay but be careful what kind of counsel you're taking from ungodly um, people okay even as we take counsel from people um, regarding various areas of our life it's also important that you know we must also receive correction from them you know sometimes when they correct us when um, um, they are uh, you know trying to warn us trying to Tell us, hey, what you're doing is wrong. We need to be humble enough uh, to receive uh, correction um, from them. Okay. And lastly, also that you know we can receive counsel from our uh, parents who are godly, uh, our own parents, especially those who are godly, uh, because you know they will cause us to walk in honor and esteem among people. Okay. We'll come back and uh, look at how we can receive counsel of godly parents okay we'll go for our break now and then we'll come back after the break <laughs> 